Where's the balance or is it more of like an internal knowing of what's the difference between that like accepting that emotional state, whether it's for ourselves or for our kids and then kind of enabling that, right? So there's, we were kind of talking about this earlier today where it's like um, be compassionate or like love everyone and tell the truth. And it's like, yes, you're allowed to be um, super sad. Maybe you go through a breakup, but at some point, like you need to overcome it. You can't just wallow in it forever because that's not in your best interest. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the same with the kid and they they don't have all of the tools that they need to be able to necessarily get over that hurdle without some help and shepherding. Yeah. So what's the difference between that accepting, processing versus versus enabling. Yeah, I think that when we get stuck is actually when we don't allow ourselves to feel it fully, that actually mm. we're trying to protect ourselves from the enormity of it or the profundity of it. So we just put on like barriers or um, like we callous ourselves from it or we, we put fear on top of the pain. Mm. And this is a Buddhist concept called the double arrow. And the idea is that pain is part of the human experience. People are going to die. People are going to get sick. Like pain is unavoidable. But when we put fear on top of pain, if we're afraid, afraid to actually feel the fullness of the pain, then we create a double arrow. So the pain itself is an arrow. It hurts, but then it passes through and it's gone. But if you're afraid to feel, then you create the double arrow and it's just like, ow, 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 ow. And the arrow, it can't go fully all the way one direction and it can't go all the way the other and then it just gets stuck. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what we're talking about. Like you've been in the breakup, you've been mourning it for a year and you're not moving through to the other side. And it's like, well, probably because you didn't actually ever fully grieve it, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's why I'm, I'm so excited about this new work that I'm birthing because it's about like just leaning all the way in, feeling it out loud. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that usually if you just cry, it's like a three to five minute exercise and then you feel better. And actually neurochemically that you release toxins out of your eyeballs mm -hmm. when you cry and then right behind that is bliss chemistry. Mm -hmm. And so- You get oxytocin, right? When you cry? Uh, I think I think yes, oxytocin, which is a love hormone, right after mm -hmm. the the toxins release from the tears. But if we're just like I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. He broke up with me and I lost my job, but I'm fine. <laughs> and you never actually have the release, mm -hmm. then then we end up numbing and and like deadening our ability to feel. Versus if we just start playing all eighty eight keys of the human emotional spectrum, then it's like oh, I can go to the depths and I know I'm not going to stay there and I can enjoy the heights and I know I'm not going to stay there either, but I'm enjoying like the full range. And as of late, I like to think about like playing all 88 keys is a, is a perhaps coveted human experience that like not all animals or plants or other sentient beings or, you know, aliens, if you're on the alien tip, like they don't have the capacity to feel all of it in an hour or a day. And so rather than trying to protect ourselves, what if we just lean in? Mm. That was one of the more like challenging and intimate exercises that we did yesterday, which was the emotional alchemy. And as we did it, I felt more comfortable and I f it felt more natural. But the very beginning I was like, oh man, like how – how do I do this? We had just met. You went first. Thank God. <laughs> so I had an example. <laughs> but even when you were like going through your process, I was like, well, what do I do? Like, am I supposed to like help or like, and that's the, that's the, um, I guess reflex that a lot of us have, which is to like, it's okay. You don't have to do this, which yeah. you're like, no, let her process it. And then you say like the good purge, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you want to kind of tell the listeners, what is emotional alchemy? And then mm -hmm. I have some follow-ups to that. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to celebrate you because like <laughs> it was such brave work. You're right. I just met this stranger person walk into your house. And next thing I know, I'm asking you to just like purge your deepest, darkest <laughs> rage and shame and guilt and sadness. Um, but if you treat it almost like um like an acting exercise or that you're a little kid playing pretend, or you know, we both have toddlers, so it's just like you you see a toddler and it's like if you give them their orange juice in the wrong shaped glass, it's like World War Three. And it's like <laughs> It's like full <laughs> meltdown. And then they just cry and scream and rage for like two to three minutes and then it's done. Mm -hmm. And they're just back to playing. <laughs> and, and it's like instead of us trying to train them out of that, I'm very into us, you know, apprenticing our children and like learning how to remember how to feel that fully. Um, and excuse yourself and go to the bathroom and cry versus like repressing it and having to cut it out as cancer 10 years later. Mm -hmm. um, so the emotional alchemy process I do as part of – 
Um, I mean, you can use it at any time. Like, I actually think we should be doing like three song dance parties every day and just tapping in all the way to anything that's been repressed, anything stuck, anything that wants to be witnessed. Uh, usually for a lot of us, that's some anger or frustration, oftentimes grief or sadness. And then we start to move it through the body. We start to actually feel it through like somatic experiencing, somatic expression, like dance or punching or sounding. Um, and then usually if, it, if we just witness it, if we just see it and feel it in its entirety, then it transmutes. Like it, the, the feelings, just like all of us, want to be seen and witnessed. And if we ignore them, they get louder. And if we feel them with the agenda to transmute them, they, they're on to us. They're like, no, don't try to change me. You know, it's like you start mm -hmm. dating someone and, the, and then you're like, oh, could you start making a little bit more money and fix your nails and maybe let's get you new <laughs> clothes? And could you start – it's like, no, don't date me. Date somebody else. You know, mm -hmm. don't try and change me. But if we just witness the feelings in their entirety, then they're like, cool. It's like then they're willing to sit in the backseat of the car and take their hands off the steering wheel of your life. Um, but emotional alchemy, what we did yesterday is like, I would invite you to just purge anything and everything that wants to come up out loud. And just to be witnessed in that is quite unusual, yes. right? Because we're all trying to convince everyone that we're all fine all the time. Mm -hmm. But actually to just hold space and not try to fix it or coach it, but just love the person as they're in their intensity. And then we moved it with some sound, with some mm -hmm. dance. And then and then it's fun to like alchemize it. If you're ready, if it's ready, alchemize it with some bliss. Mm -hmm. um, and just even music itself is its own medicine. So it's fun to um, use that as like a preparatory exercise to move into other, ex other, other things like, like pleasure prayer, which is one of the things we did. Mm 